Hi there, this is Jen and thanks so much for joining me today. I am super excited to once again be a part of the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop which um, Justine Hovey started a few years ago in response to some of the changes that YouTube was making as far as watch time hours and monetization, which affected a lot of smaller channels. And so it keeps going every year, which is awesome because it's a great opportunity for anyone out there to discover some new talent and some new YouTube creators that you might otherwise not have known about. Um, during this hop, there are over 80 participants and so um, it will give you lots of viewing time and lots of ideas and inspiration. So I encourage you to go ahead and check out as many of the videos as you can and if you like what you see go ahead and give them a big thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you find somebody new that you like and you want to continue to follow consider subscribing to their channel and then below I will have a link to the next person in the hop and on the screen is a list of all of the sponsors for this video hop which we are so thankful for and um, I want to mention also that there is a giveaway every channel on this hop will have a giveaway so to enter the giveaway please leave a comment below and indicate whether you are um, USA or international it's very important that you do that um, the giveaway is open until April 5th and on April 10th, the winners will be announced on Justine's channel and blog. And I will leave those links below. So make sure that you check back on the 10th to see if you are a winner. So let's go ahead and get started. For the cards that I'm creating for the video hop, I am creating two cards using the visible image stamp set. Um, Total Chaos, which is the bigger stamp set, and then the Creative Chaos is the older release. Um, and this is my favorite stamp set because I uh, love this flower. So here's kind of a side-by-side -side so you can see the difference between the two stamp sets. And to go along with my favorite stamp set, I'm going to use my favorite medium, which is watercolor. And for this video, I'm using mainly the Arteza 36 half pan set. And whenever I am using the pan sets, I go ahead and take my water bottle and spritz those colors with water to get them nice and ready to do some water coloring. And I've gone ahead and pulled out my stamping tool and I am gonna stamp up that image from the uh, Total Chaos stamp set using some Distress ink in antique linen. So I started out doing some no line water coloring, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna stay with that or if I was gonna heat and boss over it. So I went ahead and I took a piece of washi tape to mark off where my paper was so that I could just put that back in there and um, stamp that with the Versamark if I wanted to go back later and um, do that. And the brush that I'm going to use today is one that's fairly new to me. It's a different style than I usually use. It kind of tapers really well at the end so you can get into um, some fine details, which I'm not really doing, but I really like these brushes. And so I'm going to start out just taking a little bit of water on my brush and doing a clear wash of water on my image. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop my brush into the color and then drop that color onto the um, stamped image. And the paper that I am using for this card is a Fabriano hot press paper. I don't usually use hot press paper, but I had bought it a few weeks ago at Hobby Lobby, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a try. The hot press paper is probably not the best paper to use for this. Um, really, it's great for um, fine details or if you're going to do some sketching and watercoloring together. It is not great for multiple layers of watercolor. It is the smoothest paper out of the different types of watercolor papers. And one of the great things about a hot press paper is that the colors are more vibrant because the pigment sits on top of the paper. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop some color down and then I just cleaned my brush off with clean water and rolled it to kind of pick up a little bit of that color. Um, as I am pretty much a beginner at watercolor, it is something to kind of 
learn how much pigment and water you need and so I do end up wasting a lot of color with watercolor you really do not need hardly any color at all to uh, create what you need to create um, it's very minimal um, but as you can see uh, for my paper towel I do waste a bit um, a part of it is too that this is a new brush for me where a lot of the color um, stays in the brush and then goes to the tip when you start using it and so I'm getting used to that as well. Um, I went ahead and brought in my uh, Prima complexion palette um, just to give it a little bit of a a cream or a yellow tone just to give a little variation um, in the flower. And for most of this flower, I'm doing a wet on wet, which is basically just wetting the paper first and then dropping the wet color in. But because this is a hot press paper, it does not move as freely as a cold press paper does. So it does take a little more work to get that color to move around how I want it to um, on the paper. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish off the flower. And I went ahead and stamped up the leaves from that same stamp set. And for those, I'm going to color those with this Prima watercolor set that's called Terrain. It's got some really pretty shades of green and some different kind of earth tony colors. And I'm just going to go ahead and use uh, several of those shades of green to um, color those flowers. And so again, I'm coloring the leaves and then removing some of the color that I don't want in there. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of that kind of yellowish color and draw in the uh, veins of the leaf. And then I'm going to emboss this image. I decided to go ahead and emboss it. And so I went ahead and I put that back in my stamp positioner and used my Versa Mark um, embossing ink and then cover that in this vintage pearl embossing powder, which is really pretty. It's got a little bit of a pearlescent, kind of a um, off-white or almost beigey color. And then I'm just doing a really simple background, just a wash of this green color. Um, I don't know what that color is. It's almost like a, it turns out like a, almost a yellow green on the background. So I'm just going to go over the entire background with that color. And then I will add a little more of that color all around the outside of the flower and a leaf portion. I'm going to go ahead and let that panel dry. And then I'm going to grab my foam tape and add that to the back of the card so that I can pop that up. So the, the card stock that I'm using for the base is a kind of a tan or light brown color. Um, so that is why I did the sentiment in a brown. Uh, the sentiment says New Beginnings and it's from an older Pink Fresh Studios stamp set called, I believe it's called My Favorite Sayings or something like that. Um, it has a lot of great sayings in it. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take my foam tape and adhere the entire panel to the card. And then I'll add some embellishments. I am using some Nuvo white gloss drops. I also add some sequins from my stash in some greens and browns. Um, and that will complete this first card. Um, I really love doing this. Um, I am not a super patient person by nature, but um, watercoloring just, uh, I don't get frustrated with it. And it's just very soothing and relaxing, um, which is why I just really love it. <laughs> um, the second card I'm doing is going to be using the same stamp set. This time I'm gonna use a Strathmore cold press paper and I'm doing a light wash on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my squared off flat brush and I'm going to just put a little area not covering the entire panel of the cardstock and wet that down. So I'm going to do a wet on wet technique again. And I'm using my Arteza watercolors for this. So I'm just going to lay down the color. It moves really easily on this paper. Um, again, this is a cold press which has a little bit of texture to it. And depending on the brand of paper that you get, you will have different textures. I really, really like the Strathmore because it has a texture, but it's like a smooth texture. The Arteza, the kind that I have, is kind of more of like a hatched texture, I guess. It looks a little rougher. 
Um, so I really like the Strathmore. So I'm just taking some blues and greens and doing the wet on wet technique. And then I'm going to take some white gouache and this is an Arteza also. And I'm just going to dip my brush in the gouache. And the main difference between a gouache and a watercolor is a watercolor is transparent and a gouache is more opaque. A gouache is also thicker, so like the white um, gouache is great for adding highlights to watercolor, it's great for splatter. <laughs> and while my panel is still wet, I'm taking a piece of wax paper and I'm just crumbling it up so that it has a lot of different like texture and veins in it. And I'm just going to go ahead and press that into my panel and set something heavy on top of it and let it dry. Um, this is great to use with, you can use tin foil, you can use um, a, a saran wrap would be really good. Um, it's just probably best to use something that is non-porous so that it doesn't soak up into the paper. Um, so this was really super cool. I love the result of this. Um, it just made this really pretty texture in the background that didn't take um, any effort at all. Um, for the floral for this one, I'm using the same floral as I did for the first card. Uh, this time I am using the Arteza watercolor paper, which has a little bit of a different texture than the Strathmore. And I'm just showing a little bit of the watercolor here. I've mixed a pink color with some white gouache to lighten that color up a little bit because I didn't have a color in my palette that was um, as light of a pink as I wanted to. So I go ahead and color that image up and add a few little droplets of the a darker color. And I have already stamped up my the floral part of the image on a piece of acetate and heat embossed that in white. And then I took the image that I had watercolored and cut several um, of those f petals, I guess. And I'm going to use just a few of them, not the entire floral piece. And so what I'm going to do is take my Red Top Fine Line glue and just make little dots on the image right behind the embossed line of the image and also there's like little circle splatters on the stamped image which is super helpful because I also put glue on those areas and then adhered the um, that watercolor piece to the back of the acetate and then I'm going to take the full image and heat emboss that onto my watercolor card panel and then to assemble the card, I will use some foam tape behind that floral piece with the acetate. And then I'm also going to use some silver thread that I just wrap around and put behind that floral piece. Um, and that's pretty much it. The sentiment is from Visible Image as well. And it's from the set called Random Art of Kindness. And that'll do it for me and my two cards for the hop. Um, I am super excited to check out all the other videos on this hop, and I hope that you are as well. And don't forget to leave a comment below to be entered into the giveaway. And um, if you are not a subscriber and new to my channel and you'd like to subscribe, please go ahead and click on that red subscribe button. I would sure love to have you. Um, also, if you like this video or found it informative, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for spending some time with me today and watching this video. Um, stay safe out there and I hope everybody enjoys the videos uh, along the hop and has a little bit of a crafty, relaxing therapy time. Um, and until next time, um, I'll see you then. Thanks so much.